All right. Hi, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hi, it's Morgan here at JobForm. In today's Snack Break webinar, I'm going to review the brand new things that you can do with our updated Zapier integration. We've recently upgraded our partnership with Zapier so that you can now send zaps at send blank and pre-filled forms, as well as zaps to create form submissions. The first two zaps, where you can automatically assign a form based on an external trigger, are especially exciting to us. This is the first time that you can use Zapier to do that with any form builder across the board, so we're really excited about that. I'll be showing you how to set all three of these up, and as I go, I'll highlight some use cases for all of the new options. Now, integrating with Zapier isn't a brand new thing that JotForm is doing, so I do want to just be clear today that in the interest of keeping things succinct and focused, and because Zapier is a conduit between literally thousands of platforms, I'm just going to be highlighting these new options. These actions happen within Zapier, but you do still have options to integrate your forms from within your form builder tool itself. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about other ways you can integrate JotForm and Zapier that I don't cover today, I recommend checking out uh, our resources that we have in our user guide and on the JotForm blog. Also, Zapier, like JotForm, is free to start using. So if you are a hands-on learner like I am, I definitely recommend that if you're brand new to Zapier. All right. So on that note, I will start with our demo. And again, I am going to be showing a couple of different things here. Um, I <laughs> hey, Can anybody out there tell me if I was muted for that first piece of the presentation? It just gave me a little pop up that I was muted. So if you could hear me or couldn't, could you just let me know in the Q&A and I will start over if so? Okay, great. Thank you all so much. I don't know why I got a pop up saying I was muted. Uh, fun doing things live. All right, back to the demo here. Okay, so um, I am going to be showing a couple of examples. So examples of the three things that I mentioned. And um, I am going to be showing that through Zapier. So I do want to start with the form here just to give you some context of what we'll be looking at. For the first example, uh, let's pretend I'm hosting a craft fair. I'm asking people to register on Eventbrite. The event is free, but we wanna get a head count and use the registration also as an engagement tool. So folks are registering through the demo craft fair here. We'll come back to this year end open house as well in a moment, um, but back to the craft fair. When they register, I want to send them this form automatically. And so I'm going to use Zapier to do that. So um, they'll get this form asking for their feedback and whether or not they attended and some feedback about why or what they liked, whatever the case may be, depending on whether or not they attended. Um, and again, this will go out to them as soon as they register and they can fill it out after the event is over. So to set this up in Zapier, I'm going to go into my Zapier account, which you see here. You can see all of my active zaps here. <clears throat> But to get started with a new zap, there are some very prominent create zap buttons. So that's what I'm going to do with this first example. And uh, I want to walk through this um, clearly <laughs> because I think at least in my experience, when you're brand new to Zapier, it can be a little bit uh, difficult to get your mind around everything that you're doing. There are a couple of steps involved, but I do think that Zapier does a really nice job of outlining every step of the way. Uh, what you're going to do with Zapier is first set up your trigger. I know a lot of you out there are already using Zapier, but I do want to cover this for those who aren't. So your first piece will be to set up your trigger. That's the thing that starts the workflow. So in this case, that will be people registering for my event, right? Event. After you've set up the trigger, you'll then set up the action or the outcome. So in this case, it's sending them that form for feedback. So I'm going to start with that uh, trigger here. And if you are not already connected to the apps that you need to connect with, you'll do that first. I am connected in this case. So it's just a matter of going through the prompts here to drill down from you know, your full account through the actual event that you want to include here. First, I'll select what I want the trigger event to be. So that's a new attendee registering for the event. And from here is where I'll go through the steps of drilling down from my full account all the way down to the event itself. So I'll select my account continue, uh, choose my organization. After organization, I'll choose the list from which this event should appear. So you have a bunch of options here. I only have two events in there currently, so I'm just going to select all so I can see all of the events that I have. And finally, I'll choose the event itself. So that's our demo craft fair. 
And I'm going to hit continue. The last step of the trigger here is that Zapier is going to do a test to make sure that you're pulling the right data from the right place. This sometimes doesn't work automatically. If it doesn't, you may need to do another set of test data or just try it again, refresh. Um, but hopefully everything works this, uh, this time. So we'll just give that a second to come through. Of course, uh, try that again. Uh, if it doesn't work this time, I'm gonna move forward to just kind of walking through the rest of the example. But um, you know, sometimes there's just not quite the right connection. So we'll just skip the test for now. Um, once you have that first piece, oh, there we go. <laughs> there's some data in there. Um, so even if the test doesn't work, you will see some data in there. Uh, most of this is metadata that's not going to be relevant for you. In this case, I do need the uh, email address. So the email address will come from Eventbrite, and that's going to be the same email address that I'll use for the registration to, to send that, uh, that form in job form. So I'm going to hit continue. We'll say the, the trigger is done. Next piece is to set up the action. So I'm going to search for job form. If you're a job form enterprise user, you want to use the enterprise option here. Everyone else, you can use this job form option here. And pretty similar to the first step, you're going to first create what the event should be. So in this case, this is where you see the three new options that I just mentioned to assign a form, assign a pre-filled form, or create a submission. So in this case, I want to assign a form. I'll continue. And again, I'm just going to drill down through my account to get to the actual form I want to send. I will select my form. So that's going to be that. Thanks for your support for the craft fair. Here's where I'll pull in a signy email. So again, that's coming from Eventbrite. That's the same email address they use to register. From there, I can include a message. I can also change the permission so that when they receive it, they have the option to edit their submission later or view later or just submit with no other options after that. So once I hit continue, again, there's an option to do a test to test the whole process. I'm gonna skip that in the interest of time here. Uh, but once all of that's done, once your tests confirm everything looks right, you're just going to publish and turn on, and there you go. So your zap is set up. Uh, so now I can go back to my zaps. I'll see this with the rest of them. Uh, it's currently untitled. I can click on it and retitle, and anything I need to edit, I can also do by clicking on it again. So that is um, the first example, again, of sending a blank form. The applications for being able to send forms with another thing as a trigger are pretty extensive. Uh, you know, you, you know, this was a feedback form for an event. Maybe you're a store and you want to get feedback on recent orders through, you know, Shopify or WooCommerce. Uh, maybe you're a company that's having folks sign up uh, for appointments with Acuity or Calendly, and you want that to be the trigger to send them new patient or new client paperwork. Maybe your company uses Microsoft Teams and you want to use adding a new person to Teams as the trigger to send them their new, uh, their onboarding paperwork. Again, lots and lots of applications here. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how you might use it. Uh, the next example is uh, of the pre-filled form. And I'm not going to go through the whole process here because it's very similar. In this case, there's that year-end review that I alluded to earlier. And let's say that parents are signing up again on Eventbrite for a year-end open house at school. And again, I want to send this to the email address that they provide in Eventbrite. But in this case, I want to use the name that they provide in Eventbrite to pre-fill these two fields. Now, uh, the use cases for this are very similar, which, you know, part of why I'm not going through the whole process again. But uh, any time that you can pre-fill any data for people, that's going to increase the likelihood that they'll complete what you're asking them to do and that they'll do it quickly. There are tons of studies that show that. So even something as simple as filling out their name for them so that when they get this in their email and they click to go fill it out, that's one less thing they have to do, even saving them a couple of seconds. You know, it's really best practice wherever you can incorporate it. So this is you know, an exciting option to be able to send a pre-filled form as well. Uh, I'm going to go back into Zapier and I do have a half completed workflow here. So that's what we're going to look at for this now, I've already done that first step. That's identical to the example that I just showed. Again, that's the trigger coming from Eventbrite. In this case, uh, the action is a little bit different. So I am going to do this piece. So again, we'll look for job form. The first difference is that I'm going to choose assign a pre-filled form. And using that as the event will give us a few other options of fields that we can include when we send this out. 
So again, I'm going to go through, choose my account uh, and choose the actual form itself. And the form in this case is the year end review. There it is. Again, I'll choose a signee email that's coming from Eventbrite, but you can see below the same fields that we saw in the last example, there are a number of other fields here. So most of them are coming from the form itself. So you see those same fields that we have on the form and I can choose to pull in data here. So I'm going to pull in that first name and that last name here. The other additional fields that you'll see here is the option to make these pre-filled fields editable or read only. So if you want to lock those fields so nobody can, you know, so the recipient can't touch them once they receive them, you know, you want to select read only. In this case, maybe one parent is registering, but another, you know, family friend or another adult is going to attend in their place, or you know, we want the option for, you know, this to be editable for whatever reason. I'm going to leave it as editable. Editable. I'll hit continue. Again, I'm going to skip that uh, test in this case, but at that point, my workflow here is done. And now parents will receive this form with their name filled out. It'll go straight to their email and um, hopefully they'll fill that out and then they can chat with the teacher about their feedback on the year. Uh, one other example of using pre-fill as an option, uh, you know, I've talked in two cases here about using Eventbrite as a source, as the trigger. You don't have to use Eventbrite, obviously, you can use many other platforms, but you can also trigger an action not from an external platform. So I've heard from a lot of folks out there that you have a daily thing you need employees to fill out. I know throughout you know, COVID, there are a lot of like health declarations and other things, um, timesheets or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you, know, you are a therapist and you have clients that you want to check in with on a daily basis and you have them fill out this mood checker. Uh, mood tracker. Uh, again, you can have this pre-filled with their information, you know, the name already filled out, and then automatically send this out to them. In this case, I have this set up as a um, just an uh, just the date is triggering it. So when you go to set up your zap uh, with your triggers, you will see other options. So you have apps here, but you also have tools on the side here. In this case, I've just used the schedule option to do that mood tracker. Same thing with the actions as well. You know, I'm just scratching the surface here on what you can do with Zapier, but you do have other options here on the sidebar as well. So definitely recommend playing around with it and finding something that really works for you. All right, one final example, and this is switching gears a little bit. Uh, this is the example of using a trigger to add, uh, to fill out a form instead of actually filling out the form. So this can be really useful if you are collecting data from a couple of different sources. So let's say in this example, I'm a beauty care store. New folks can fill this out online and request an appointment, or maybe people are calling in over the phone for advice, or um, they're popping in in person to explore products and get advice and feedback from the professionals that work there. Uh, another use case might be if you have a, you know, a sales team. Sales teams are incredibly busy. We all know that. Um, and maybe they don't have the time to fill out a form like this, or they just don't have it easily accessible. And you want to be able to pull that same data into job form from Slack or even from a phone call or whatever, you know, whatever that source may be. You can use Zapier for that as well in this case. So in the end, all of the data is getting stored in a table from this form, even if the form itself isn't being used. So in this case, I have set up Zapier, let's go back one step, um, to use, uh, here we go, this is my send new customer info. Um, I'm using a Google Docs integration here. So anytime somebody in person or over the phone talks to a new client, they're just going to come into this Google Drive folder that we've set up. This is our new customers folder. They're going to just do two things. They're gonna name uh, a new file, with the new client's name. So we'll say this is Susan, new client. And they're just gonna fill out whatever information they get about the client's concerned. So, you know, they fill out whatever there. I'm using Zapier in this case to pull in the name from the title of the document here. And the text here will go into a you know, concern field in the, um, in the form. Uh, so if we go back to the form here, I mentioned that all this data gets collected in tables, whether it gets entered from JotForm directly or from this integration in this case. 
So we should see that pop up here. It may not pop up all automatically. Oh, it did. It's here. It is right here. So we have Susan, new client. She's included in the table, right along with other folks who've used the form or other folks who are added to that folder. So on that note, um, that ends the demo. And um, I'm already a little over the time. I try to keep these to 15 minutes. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have time for questions. I do see that a couple of you have questions in the chat. Those of you who attend, have attended our snack breaks in the past, you know that I would be happy to hear from you. So if you have questions that this session didn't address, or if you want to share an exciting workflow, I would love to hear from you for either of those. If I can't answer your question, I would be happy to connect you with our support team. They should respond to you within a couple of hours, but you know, we'll, we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and again, I love hearing examples and use cases and how you're practically using these tools. It really helps me and helps all of us just and I know what people are actually doing out there. So, um, so I welcome you to get in touch with me for that. I'm Morgan at JotForm, just M-O-R-G-A-N at JotForm.com. And the last thing I want to mention is that we have webinars, I think, um, every week for the next four weeks. So next week, we will have one more snack break. We're doing a series of integration snack break webinars this month. And one more snack break next week, same time, where I'll be talking about the new options for Apple Pay and Google Pay integration. So stay tuned for more information on that if that's something that's applicable to you. And uh, on that note, I want to thank you all for being here. Again, thank you for the feedback and letting me know that my sound was working. I'm glad to hear it was. Uh, thanks for hanging out a little bit longer than 15 minutes and hope you all had a snack and enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time. All right, bye.